uh, good morning uh, today we'll have a discussion on uh, uh, dnb exam pattern oski and uh, today uh, the best person who is uh, passionate about these oski questions uh, professor ramanuj mukherjee will take us through the different scenarios <clears throat> and i request uh, one of the resident to please respond in just a discussion if you don't know the answer it's not a problem we'll discuss and let you know the uh, correct approach for such uh, oski scenario okay so uh, feel free to join and then you can pick up other people afterwards but just uh, this is how a oski goes we are not projecting exactly uh, what was shown earlier in the oski but we are showing some uh, model uh, oski scenarios and you should be practicing this and uh, keep in mind always that the oski answers are preset answers so it's not that you create something and then uh, Uh, get the marks. You have, this your answer should tally with the examiner's already uh, preset answers. So be very specific. It's not that you need to line uh, a lot of things. It's very brief because time allotted is uh, always uh, three to five minutes for each of the OSCE scenario. So be very specific while you answer. If you don't know, say I don't know. Then we discuss. Okay. So Milind, you can uh, start sharing screen and start. Sir, should I go to the first question? Yeah, yeah. First scenario. Who is who is uh, answering this? Uh, sir, we have Doctor Neha who will be answering the first scenario. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, Neha, you can read the scenario. Neha. Yes, sir. Good you morning, sir. And read the uh, scenario first, and then we will go to the questions. Okay, sir. you read it loudly for other people 64 year old lady presented with a slow uh, slowly progressive swelling in front of the left ear swelling is firm in consistency there is a 1 cm non tender lymph node in ipsilateral level 1 cervical lymph node no palsy of facial nerve what is your clinical diagnosis fine so can you give us a clinical diagnosis uh, sir uh, my clinical diagnosis is malignancy of the uh, parotid gland with no facial nerve involvement Mal uh, malignancy of the left parotid gland so because left side swelling is shown okay so if i ask you why why you put first diagnosis as malignancy in this patient uh, sir uh, although it is slow growing uh, given the age of the patient and uh, lymph node is present level 1 cervical lymph node is present it points more um, in favor of malignancy sir okay okay uh, neha see uh, in an oski as sir has said <clears throat> you are always required to make a very specific answer you have said the real, you have said the perfect answer but i would like to frame your answer as what is your clinical diagnosis my clinical diagnosis is a parotid swelling for a left sided parotid swelling full stop probably malignant will be the maximum that i will comment because the next question that you are given is what is your diagnosis regarding the probable pathology then you are at loss of words around what should i mention isn't it okay so please proceed hello yeah yes sir now yeah. yeah. next question come on please. mention any three points in favor of your uh, pathological diagnosis sir first the age of the patient then a uh, lymph node is present and the swelling is firm in consistency so and what about uh, the surface anything in the uh, surface you see the swelling how how the swelling looks like if you look grossly also is it a smooth swelling like a mixed parotid tumor no no sir uh, so? the surface is irregular and bosselated yes Uh, sir how will you confirm your diagnosis sir we will uh, we would like to uh, do sir usg guided fnc to confirm our diagnosis uh, okay 
ஒருஸ்பெக்டடுமேஷன்ஸ்ரேட்டடுபேஸ் that you can see and uh, the appearance or any involvement of the skin if any how will you confirm your diagnosis should be an fnac which is ultrasound guided should be the best answer but you should also answer that an fnac from the lymph node also should also be done to confirm your diagnosis so it is fnac from the swelling plus the fnac from the lymph node okay so now a few points to discuss dr neha if this is a parotid malignancy what is the plan that you will do if you confirm that this is a parotid carcinoma raj you can discharge little part of the other part like uh, uh, if you say, say because you see this is a osky question but uh, some right. examiner might put some other questions such as if i place a question what may we said there is no facial nerve palsy what are the symptoms of facial nerve palsy mention some symptoms 1 2 3 ஒருஸ்கிஸ் <laughs> Yes, sir. On, and I'm attempting to you see, close Oski, the eye. Oski, you need not say more. If I ask you okay, three sir. or four symptoms of facial nerve palsy, these are good enough. One is inability okay, to sir. close the eyes, deviation of the angle of the mouth. Next, difficulty in chewing, food get accumulated in the vestibule of the mouth. Okay. So, the other, yes, if you, we very specific answers. One, two or three. Okay. Okay, okay. sir. Okay. Then, if you go to the little part of anatomy of facial nerve, what is the exit yes, point of facial nerve from the base of the skull? Sir, I have forgotten, sir. Sorry, sir, I don't know. Fine, no problem. It, it exits to the stylum of stat foramen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It exits to the stylum of stat foramen. Yes, sir. Now, now, Dr. Ramana's question. Yes. Okay. now so the other questions regarding these will be that what are the points or if it is a parotid pathology if it is a parotid malignancy what are the common histology types of parotid malignancy that you know of maybe two two Sorry, two marks question two marks question what okay, that, why, why don't you know you just classify the malignancy is higher epithelial tumors non epithelial tumors he said malignancy not carcinoma okay yes sir yes sir epithelial cell tumors and non epithelial cell tumors yes so epithelial cell tumor commonest is what in the parotid uh... okay it can be adenoid cystic it... a sinar cell carcinomas it can be mucoepidermoid carcinomas actually something that arises in a background of a pleomorphic adenoma is a carcinoma x pleomorphic salivary adenoma okay. so it be so the most common one should be either an adenoid cystic or sinar cell mucoepidermoids thereafter come the Yeah, so okay. it is good to talk about that and very very said, non-epithelial is usually the site of deposit of various carcinoma like a squamous carcinoma from the other part of the scalp or the system right come to be a carcinoma then what is the treatment that you do for these kind of tumors maybe okay. what investigation will suggest name what is three important name three important investigations required for proceeding for management 
It may be repetition uh, of what you earlier said. It may be repetition of what you earlier said. If I say three investigations. Uh, sir, first I would like to do USG guided FNC to confirm my diagnosis. Yes. Then I would also like to do a CT scan or MRI to know whether there is bone involvement or deep lobe involvement yes. uh, or uh, if there is facial nerve palsy. But clinically we have seen that facial nerve is not involved. Still, uh, a, so a malignancy please... evaluation such a large swelling, a CT or MRI is uh, desirable. Yes, Hello. sir. So, sir, these two investigations, I would uh, like to go ahead with. And and the lymph node should be evaluated. Okay. Uh, yes, lymph, sir. Uh, FNC from the lymph node as well. Yes, yeah. sir. Fine. So, Neha, now see, this is a headache malignancy. So, those who are not talking headache malignancy, that's sir. But whenever you mention a CT in a head neck cancer, always mention CT from the skull base to the root of the neck. So that you can see the full nodal spread. Remember, this has been shown to have level one lymph node only because the treatment is going to be dependent upon what are the lymph nodes and the stage is going to be different. Okay, so this is the investigation. Now tell me what is the suggested management if the facial nerve is free from the involvement of the disease like in this patient. Facial nerve is free but the diagnosis answer. What is your suggested treatment? Uh, sir, I would like to uh, sir, in this particular patient we would do a facial nerve preserving uh, radical parotidectomy and uh, along with that we would also do radical neck dissection sir. It should be MRND. MRND. Okay, sir. Modified radical neck dissection. Okay. Okay, Thank sir. You. Number one, number two, C. This is a good answer for us, but the examiner may or may not like that answer because majority of the malignancies, except a low epidermoid, should call for a total parot a radical parotidectomy. That means excision of the facial nerve along with mm -hmm. the para superficial and the deep lobes with the capsule, sometimes even the skin and maybe the parotidum acetary fascia. But in low-grade mucopidermoid, when there is no involvement of the facial nerve, you may go in for a total parotidectomy with preservation of the facial nerve. And as you have very appropriately mentioned, it is a comprehensive neck dissection, a MRND or a radical neck dissection. Okay? So I think that this is the first case. I think that we should proceed to the next one. Okay, so it was good, Dr. Neha, that you <coughs> more or less answered everything exactly in the, in the way yeah. examiners. Okay, yes. good. Thank Thank you, teachers. Cool to borrow, cool to. I think, uh, Milin. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I'll move to the second question. Yeah. Sir, uh, we have Dr. Ganesh uh, will be taking this question, sir. Okay. Ganesh, you read the scenario. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. A 28 year old lady with no history of familial breast cancer presented with rapidly enlarging painless breast lump for last six months with a bucillated surface, firm consistency, no axillary nodes were clinically palpable. The overlying skin appears stretched but with no edema or fixity. What are the differential diagnoses in this patient? Sir, should I answer, sir? Yes, yes. You're just first question. You say ask the scenario, so give specific answer. What are the sir, differential diagnoses in this patient? Uh, it should uh, be prioritized. Pilot's tumor of the breast, yes. Jane fibroadenoma, uh, uh, carcinoma breast. <clears throat> How will you confirm the diagnosis? True cut wait, biopsy. Sir. Wait, 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 biopsy. Manuj, uh, respond. Okay. Right. So, in the differential diagnosis, I am happy that you have mentioned the pilotus tumor. Then it, then it will be a giant Jane fibroadenoma. Because the picture definitely is suggested, though the Picture has not mentioned any size of the lump, but yes, I think it is more, more than five centimeters. That is very obvious, and it would be better to call it a giant fibroadenoma, then followed by really a or really a carcinoma of the breast. Okay. I am happy with the differential diagnosis in the way that you have put it. Now, how will you confirm the diagnosis? What is your answer for this? Sir, I would like to confirm my diagnosis by uh, core needle biopsy, sir. True cut biopsy. Uh, I will no. not be happy with that answer. No, no. Ask the yes, scenario. Sir. The approach for any breast lump patient is what? 
Hello. What do we expect in ultrasound before diagnosis is right? What are the classic features of ultrasonography in a patient who has got a fibrous tumor in the breast? Typical findings. Sir, uh, sir, involvement of stromal ultrasound does not reveal stroma in ultrasound, but there are some specific features we discussed two days back only. On fibrous tumor. Hmm? Like... Yes, what? First, see the, see the involvement. Okay. If you take the anteroposterior diameter, it is less than the transverse diameter of the swelling. Okay. Sir. Next is, if you see the outline, we can delete the border. Irregular borders. Okay. Next is, if you see the inside, what is the interior of the tumor looks like in ultrasonography? Footage. No, no. Footage. The inside will be showing clay-like cleavages. Okay, sir. Okay, which may appear hyperequage. Okay, sir. Okay, then you said true cut. Agreed. Yes, sir. Sir, should I read the second question? next question, sir? Yeah, go to the next question. What is the surgical management plan? Uh, sir, if, if it's turned to be a fluid tumor, I would like to do simple mastectomy followed by desirably breast reconstruction. No, you cannot make a blank statement like that. You have to, is the treatment being uh, influenced by your two-cut biopsy report? S sir, uh, yes, sir. In case of... Uh, if it is an high grade uh, fluid tumor, I would like to go uh, with the how, radiation. How are the, how are the fibrous tumors classified based on two cut biopsy? Sir, uh, benign, borderline, and malignant based on the stromal cellularity, stromal growth, and uh, mitotic index. Yes. Border. Border. Yeah, uh, sir, border, sir. Border, whether it is infiltrating or not. Okay, sir. Okay. There are some points to take into account. Okay. Uh, See, doctor, the, <coughs> so the main point is that you are always considering this from an angle of a phyllodis tumor. Now, yes, what is the age at which phyllodis tumor is going to happen? Sir, usually the late third and fourth decade, sir. So that means around 30s to 40, 50s, though yes, sir. it can start from anything around the age of 20 and can have or occur around the age of but it is very common for this to happen around the age of 30s. Now, okay, so if you are seeing the answer bluntly to be a mastectomy, the problem is that, that the examiner had set up this question with a giant fibroadenoma in his mind. So definitely okay, that will be a big, big, big discredit if you have mentioned directly that this is going to be a, a mastectomy directly. Now, see, this question is made to test how open-minded you are when you are writing that answer for this interesting question. Because remember, this is the reason see the first question. He had asked for a DD. He had not directly mentioned this is the philodus. So, as Sir has mentioned, your core biopsy needle is going to be suggestive of a philodus tumor. But does it confirm a philodus with a giant fibroadenoma? What is your opinion on that? So, though this is not a part of the hospital. Sir, based on the mitotic index and stromal irregularity, we can differentiate phyloids and giant fibroadenoma, but sometimes it may be equivocal also. Very good. So, see, 
the main problem in a phyllodes is that there is a criteria called the azobardi salvatore in those criteria but yes if it is malignant based on that criteria then you may do a mastectomy but majority of people will like to do a wide local excision particularly if there is a confusion between a benign fibro phyllodes tumor and a giant fibroadenoma they will now the main question will be that what will be the reconstruction that is a different scenario but okay. if it is a benign phyllodes tumor versus a giant fibroadenoma definitely it will be always or a borderline it will be good to consider a wide local excision with 1 cm margin and then proceed to the final histopathology and then take a decision if it comes out to be malignant maybe you may need to follow up the patient and then do a mastectomy at recurrence or you may need to think about the next question okay so now tell me what is the role of radiotherapy chemotherapy in this group of patients so, anesh in anesh sir in in benign uh, phyllodes it was yes. a dictum to have a margin of 1 cm 1 cm what is the current recommendation for benign phyllodes tumor sir 5 mm margin is still fine it is said that you did not take a clear margin you just excise the tumor just a clear margin a, a, a 5 mm or 1 cm margin is not required because in benign phyllodes tumor the risk of recurrence is very less yes. and even if the risk of recurrence is there to some extent this recurrence patient is not very aggressive and you can manage easily okay. and some of these patient may just be kept on surveillance okay so for benign phyllodes tumor once in a margin is not mandatory but okay, that is required in borderline and malignant phyllodes tumor okay sir okay you have done a uh, mastectomy in this patient what machine you yes. prefer skin sparing or skin sacrificing mastectomy sir skin sparing mastectomy yes skin and nipple sparing because here the nipple is not involved okay sir so you can do a skin sparing but you have to excise a lot of skin you need to do some uh, plastic procedure and how do you reconstruct sir uh, out of this uh, tissue implantation sir name name it flap uh, sir tram flap sir transverse rectus abdominis flap or or ld flap ld flap sir okay so next question was what is the role of sir, radiotherapy and chemotherapy in this patient sir if my diagnosis turns out to be a uh, histopathology turns out to be a giant fibroadenoma then th there is no need of radiotherapy and chemotherapy if it turned out to be a intermediate or a malignant phyllodes i would like to give radiotherapy uh -huh. is it routine to give radiotherapy right sir is it all radiotherapy sir i am not able to get the question sir can hello hello ha ah, yes sir routine radiotherapy does not have any role even if it is a malignant phyllodes until yes, and unless you have a positive margin of dissection at the first time so you have a positive margin of dissection at the first time or involvement or a say technically an r1 resection then the important point will be you need to consider a resection or maybe convert your wide local excision to a mastectomy but okay sir the role of radiotherapy will be when you are dealing with a recurrent phyllodes and you have done it for a surgery maybe a, again a wide local excision or a mastectomy and then you it went a recurrent so you are going to take it and you are going to take it and you are going to take it and what is the role of chemotherapy sir there is no definite role of chemotherapy in uh, phyllodes tumors no 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 you have but see the examiner has made a question please that that does not mean that he does not uh, he has not made that question without an answer sir is is chemotherapy being described at all for some form of uh, phyllodes tumor how these tumors spreads sir hematogenous route of spread usually what about lymph node uh, Uh, evaluation in uh, phyllodes. 
so, what about the lymph nodes evaluation in patient with Fowler's tumor? Suppose clinically sir. there is no IgG node palpable. Yes, sir. Is it mandatory to do a ultrasound and uh, other invasion to evaluate uh, the axilla? Sir, uh, as a part of clinical extraction, I would like to image axilla with USG, but uh, I, usually, I won't be doing. Usually, I usually won't be... the lymph nodes are not the site for metastasis. Okay, sir. Okay, so chemotherapy, you cannot say one line that no role of chemotherapy. There are okay. some situations where you need to consider chemotherapy. When? Okay, sir. Sir, I don't know, sir. Okay. Chemotherapy will be of only value when it is a metastasis. And in a metastatic disease or a recurrent disease, this is going to behave like a metastatic soft tissue sarcoma. So under these okay, circumstances, sir. particularly the most common set of metastasis is the lungs. So there is a role of chemotherapy only in these circumstances. Okay. okay. It is usually a, a paclitaxel-based chemotherapy or a taxin-based chemotherapy. Okay. So this is all about uh, the discussion about giant fibrotinoma, more importantly, if you allow this tumor. Okay, so okay. I hope that you have understood this, uh, the style of the questions and the tempo of the questions. Okay, okay. Then, it was a good going, Dr. Ganesh. Next, sir. So we have Dr. Bharat joining us. Uh, he'll be taking this question. Dr. Good morning, Bharat, sir. Can you please understand? Yeah, yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, yeah. Good morning. Dr. Bharat, uh, please read the scenario. Uh, sir, sir Bharat, you are from? You are from? I am from the, from Tamil Nadu, sir. Tamil Nadu, good, very good. Yeah, yeah 65 year old gentleman, active smoker, presented with jaundice and upper abdomen pain, weight loss for about three months. The stool are pale colored, urine mustard oil in color with pruritis. A non tender, smooth upper abdominal lump is felt, a zone which is dull on percussion. What is your clinical? Diagnosis. Uh, it's a diagnosis of a case of uh, obstructive jaundice. Yes. With uh, probably with the enlargement of uh, uh, GBA malignancy pathology, sir. You mean uh, gallbladder malignancy? Uh, no, sir. Probably malignancy. You see, you see, as you see the lump, it's a smooth lump with a medial border. Lower border, the lateral border, and upper border is close to the close coastal margin. Yes, so, what is the common scenario? The scenario that is given, and if you ask the diagnosis, a patient of obstructive jaundice with a palpable gallbladder. Okay. What is the commonest diagnosis comes to your mind? Sir, it's a periamplary carcinoma, the most common factor. So, the site of obstruction should be infracystic. Yes. Infra, okay, sir. Infracystic region, okay. It may be carcinoma, okay. pancreas, may be periamperial carcinoma or distal cholangiocarcinoma. Okay, okay, sir. So, Ramanaj, what should be the scenario here? Sir, 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 the... sir. hello, hello, yeah, no, sir. see, my diagnosis will be obstructive jaundice number two, malignant in etiology, hmm. site. Probably be periamphalary. So I'll use three words when you are answering the first question. What is your clinical diagnosis? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Because okay, the examiner wants a very specific point in this one. Obstructive okay. jaundice, you have mentioned. Okay, sir. Uh, malignancy, you have mentioned. And the next one is sight is, as I have said, infrastructure. So I have mentioned periamphalary because infracystic, the most common site will always be periamphalary. Okay. okay now sir. come to the next. What is what your is, what is the, uh, what is the, a few, few things from here. Why do you say this is obstructive jaundice? Sir, uh, patient had a uh, pale colored stool with a pruritus jaundice. The most probably it be obstructive. And, and, sir. And, and if you find a palpable gallbladder on the background of patient having jaundice, it's likely to be obstructive jaundice. Right. So, obstructive jaundice. Okay. Why do you say okay. this patient has got a malignancy underneath? Sir, the history of uh, weight loss for about three months is... Uh, and before that, that, start with the age, 65 years. The patient 65. Okay, sir. Start with the duration of the symptoms. 
Okay, sir. Okay, because okay. when you are asked a particular scenario, you should pick up points. Because the examiner, if he has set a OSCE question, he has put on this that you have to mention okay. about age, short duration, and rapid progression. Okay, so that might be okay. the and the palpable gall bladder. Okay, so sir. you should keep to the particular scenario and give specific answers. Why it is malignancy? Age, age, short duration. Duration with the loss of weight. Yes. Uh, loss of weight and and the palpable gall bladder. Okay. Right. So what, what is, is the diagnosis of the abdominal lump? What is the diagnosis of the abdominal lump? So it's confined to the right hypochondrium. It can be a match to the uh, liver, secondary again, metastasis again, to again, the liver. Again, keep in mind, we always emphasize a right hypochondrium area in the abdomen is a very short area, maybe thumb size area. If you see this lump, do you think the lump is confined to the right hypochondriac region? All right uh, lumbar. Okay. It extends. Mm. Yeah, is a very small area, very small okay. area below the costal margin, and the lump is extending to the adjacent areas. Maybe it is going to the epigastrium or umbilical or to the lumbar region. Okay, so okay. what did you put forward for such a lump? First is what? First is as you said, what First lump is gallbladder? Gallbladder, good enlargement, enlargement, gallbladder. Yes. What may be the next? Did you? Uh, secondary metastasis to the Metastatic swelling in the liver, sir. So, metastatic nodule in the liver. In the liver. Okay. So, if, if I am not giving a, a background of obstetric jaundice, just a lump like this in this region, what may be the other important uh, DD? Uh, Pseudocyst of pancreas. Where? If you are at all a pseudocyst in the pancreas, where the cyst location should be in this lump? Mm. It has to be in the region of head. Mm. Okay, sir. Apart from that, any other important structure here which can produce this lump? Sorry, sir, I don't know, sir. Huh? I don't know, sir. Any, any anything related to the colon? A hepatic flexure growth. Yes. Uh, yes. So, Ramana, what should be the OSCE answer for this lump DD? Yeah. No, sir, it can't be. No, no, Dr. Ramana. Okay, see, the OSCE answer should be number one, palpable gallbladder. I will be mentioning two words. Good surface, a periampillary carcinoma. Irregular okay. surface, a carcinoma, gallbladder. Be relevant to this case. Differential okay. diagnosis will be a palpable liver nodule or a Enlarged, okay. rarely a riddle slope of the liver is a very rare example of this one. Okay. Lastly, okay. Yeah, I said, should first be one or DD. Yes, it can be. So now that means you are trying to say. So rather than mention hydatid cyst, again, which is not a very common one to come around in this point only as this lump. Rather than mention that, I will be mentioning this. If there is no jaundice. Then it is more common to consider a benign pathology of gallbladder like an empyma or a mucosil or even maybe a carcinoma gallbladder. Now other liver pathologies, non jaundice could be a hydatid cyst or a cyst of the liver, etc. But remember, this is an OSCE. This is not a viva question. Yeah, yeah. So you should stick to the scenario. Stick to the scenario. Like, so hence I mentioned the answer to be jaundice patient, smooth gallbladder, Periampillary carcinoma, irregular surface gallbladder to consider as a carcinoma of the gallbladder. Okay. So, and last, lastly, as a differential diagnosis, a large liver nodule, not a large metastatic liver nodule. Right. Okay. Now, okay, sir. Sir, how will you confirm the diagnosis? Sir, the triple phase uh, contrast in your uh, CT abdomen, sir. No, don't jump. Don't jump. First, you confirm diagnosis of study jump. Ask the question. So to uh, confirm the, the confirmation, of, confirmation of diagnosis of obstetric jaundice, how do you do that? 
சார் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பயோகெமிக்கல் இன்வெஸ்ட்மெண்ட் டோட்டல் பில்லர் ரூபன் சார் ஃபார் எ லுக் ஃபார் எலிவேஷன் ஆஃப் ஜாண்டிஸ் ஆன் சார் ஸ்டேட் வெ லிவர் ஃபங்க்ஷன் டெஸ்ட் டு கன்ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் தி ஜாண்டிஸ் நம்பர் 1 நம்பர் 2 டோன்ட் ஜம்ப் டு சிடி ரிமெயின் வித் தி அல்ட்ராசவுண்ட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் எக்ஸ்டென்ஷன் ஆஃப் கிளினிக்கல் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் தட் ஹஸ் டு பி தேர் ஓகே சார் ஓகே லிவர் ஃபங்க்ஷன் டெஸ்ட் அல்ட்ராசவுண்ட் ஆஃப் தி அப்டோமன் அப்டோமன் டு யூ திங்க் அல்ட்ராசவுண்ட் கேன் கிவ் எ டயக்னோசிஸ் இன் திஸ் பேஷன் சார் ஆ uh um, uh with the ultrasound we can look for where the pathology is coming from if it is uh, any cbd dilatation of the cbd uh, any free fluid in the abdomen how, how do you how do you how do you score ultrasound for evaluation of hepatobiliary disease good moderate bad moderate sir is good ultrasound is a very good investigation for hepatobiliary disorder okay. okay for stone disease for stone disease this is the sole investigation you need not do a ct scan to assess for stone disease in malignancy okay. yes you need a ct scan but always keep in mind ultrasound is a very good investigation for hepatobiliary disease okay what is okay. double duck sign what is double duck sign sir sir i couldn't remember okay so anybody else sir dilated cbd and pancreatic and yeah so double duct sign is when you do imaging you find both the bile duct and pancreatic duct is dilated that give an idea that the site of obstruction might be in the region of ampulla okay sir okay, okay. now you said you'll do triphasic cct scan why why is this a particular ct ct scan is required for evaluation of patient with pancreatic malignancy to look for the infiltration of a vascular such a portal vein supramesentery vein and a supramesentery artery sir for nodal involvement ask a ask a question you should answer specifically number 1 it helps in diagnosis number 1 number 2 it helps in staging and number 3 it helps in assessing resectability yes yeah? okay so oski answer is different ha huh? okay. you are not facing the examiner you have to put your answer on sheet that is that you thought the examiner has already kept in his mind okay. so, see for that what are the criteria what are the criteria to decide that this patient has got a borderline resectable pancreatic cancer do you know some criteria sir uh, if the uh, based upon the entrainment of uh, hello yes yes please sir it depend upon whether the encouragement of uh, encasement of uh, portal vein and uh, mm-hmm. sir, if it is more than 360 degree if it is not resectable it is considered as uh, not resectable sir if it is less, less, one, one around 180 degree if it is a borderline resectable sir when coming to portal vein and hepatic uh, no you have to read specifically because you see portal vein is a resectable structure even if there is 360 degree okay. encasement of portal vein the point is if you have a reconstructible vein above and below this is still a borderline resectable tumor okay okay 360 okay. degree encasement of supramesentric artery is a non resectable situation okay okay sir just outline what is the strategy for management of bottle and excitable pain sir uh so first to uh, uh to alleviate the jaundice you have to correct the coagulation profile what is the the specific... you just mention three points for for management of a bottle and pancreatic cancer is it upfront surgery sir I, i am not able to get your question sir outline for treatment of borderline residual pancreatic cancer sir one you said is relief of jaundice fine how do you provide relief of jaundice uh, sir if a, uh, if the patient is unfit for the surgery or we can proceed to cholesis uh, surgical cholesis simple cholesis to me sir to alleviate for the for a borderline pancreatic cancer why there are other ways to relieve jaundice 
You see, borderline pancreatic cancer strategy is number one. You relieve jaundice by endoscopic stenting. Number one. Okay. Sir. Then get a diagnosis. You have to get a histological diagnosis by okay. either EUS guided biopsy or Parkinson's biopsy. Okay. Then put the patient for neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Reassess okay. the patient. And then consider for surgical treatment. So that is the outline for a modern research pancreas. Next question was, what is the CT scan protocol that you should advise in this patient? What is that? CT scan protocol? I don't know. In, in a patient of pancreatic malignancy? Sir, I don't know. Okay. This is a common question that you hear across examinations. Have you heard about a pancreatic protocol CT? No, sir. Okay. So, could be, please, uh, I will be posting later in the group, the WhatsApp group, what are the requisites of a pancreatic protocol? But very importantly, this is a non-contrast phase, early arterial, late arterial, followed by a venous. Each of these four have their own reasons. The cut thickness is one to three millimeter and the dye that is given should be an iodinated dye, which is usually given with a continued pressure injector, continuous infusion. So these are definite important points that you should call as pancreatic protocol CT. Okay. okay. I think we should be now moving to the next video. Yes, yes, yes. Mili, pass on to the next. Sir, can I ask one question, sir? Yes, please. Sir, uh, in the borderline resectable, can we proceed with the percutaneous biopsy or it should be endoscopic retro, uh, better, ESP is, biopsy better is EUS biopsy because that okay. does not make a percutaneous pass. EUS biopsy is preferable. If it's a head of pancreas and uh, EUS uh, biopsy is not possible, then can we proceed then with it? Fine. Pancreatic head cutscene by EUS biopsy is possible. Why not? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. It is possible. It's a preferred uh, mode of biopsy. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, I think, Benid, we can go to the next case. Yes, sir. So, the next case, sir. Sir, uh, I don't have a volunteer for this question, sir. I, I would request if somebody from one of the participants who joined in would like to volunteer. Are, are you, Jyoti? 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 Can I? Yeah, uh, sir, Dr. Pankaj wants to uh, answer, sir. Okay, fine, fine. Fine, Pankaj. Yes, sir. Dr. Dr. Pankaj, you are from? Sir, I am from uh, sir, uh, Haryana, uh, otherwise studying in Gilbey Hospital, sir, Kolkata. Okay, fine. Fine. Sorry, just in Okay, sir. A 68 year old lady underwent an extensive abdominal surgery with a ostomy formation. So, consider this as a permanent stoma. So, what probably was the surgery done? Sir, it uh, can be a APR. If it's a permanent stoma, yeah. can, it can be an APR. Abdominal okay, peritoneal. Stop there. Surgery. So, describe this stoma. What is this stoma? Where is the stoma okay. made? What is the likely uh, stoma here? So there is a stoma in the uh, uh, left side of the abdomen. Yes. It's uh, most likely to be a uh, colonic uh, colon as in stoma. Stoma is uh, a pouted with a, uh, a healthy, uh, red, uh, healthy viable gut. Uh, the, the examiner is asking about some complication being shown in this picture. I can easily make out looking at the picture. There is a parastomal, uh, there, in the surrounding of the uh, stoma, there is a uh, herniation of the structures, can be a parastomal hernia. So, what is the incidence of having a parastomal hernia in in the course of this uh, patient having a stoma? So there is a fifty to seventy, uh, fifty, uh, nearly forty to seventy percent chances of uh, having a parastomal herniation. Yes, it's very high. I'm very high. Okay, it's a very high. Yes, you are right. So, next question, sir, should I? Yes, please, please, please proceed. Okay. Uh, <coughs> well, Dr. Pankaj, say before you proceed to the next question. Yes, sir. Before you proceed with the... Now, see, in an OSCE, as sir has mentioned, the examiner is waiting. He, <coughs> he has a preset set of answers. 
and he is expecting you to go exactly in that format now whenever you describe a stoma we have around a couple of points to begin with what is the location this is also for a ward round scenario what is the location of the stoma can you mention the location of the stoma i'll be very quickly running you through the question what is the location it's over, it's over the uh, umbilical region sir sir it is in the left floor left, of, left of the abdomen number 2 in umbilical line you see you can clearly see this is the spinal umbilical line yes sir spinal umbilical line where it is if you take the spinal umbilical line what is the ideal site for bringing this stoma out where sir it's over the little bud of uh, little bud of the rectus sir in the spin- uh, spinal umbilical line sir and no, over the uh, uh, not over any of the crease of the abdomen uh, where patient can be uh, easily see it uh, okay so it is usually in the part of the spine it is on the spine line it is usually to the rectus rather than on the lateral border of the rectus makes it more denervated it is usually through the rectus. okay the next point is how many lumens we get to see you, over here it's one sir otherwise we can see two uh, if it's a do not see two lumens sir i see only one so yes, what type of it will it become so it's end stoma perfectly so this is an end stoma right what is the size of the lumen of the stoma is it very small is it large so it seems to be adequate it to be large suggestive of a large colonic stoma point number 4 what is the complicate what is the condition of the mucosa is it mucosa. normal Is Because it unhealthy? Seems it seems healthy. Point number five. Now, what is the content that is coming out from the stoma? One answer not shown. Okay, but if it is shown, it is better to mention. Point six. What is the device that the patient is using? Again, not shown in this one. Now, talk of complications to begin with. can you mention any common complications one you have mentioned is a hernia that occur in an stoma four complications that can occur in the stoma and you have a question also mention any other two complications in this ostomy in addition to the above mentioned example so can you quickly mention complications in an ostomy so it can retract it can prolapse if there can be a necrosis of the bowel uh, so can you divide the complications into a early and late yes sir uh, there can be early complication and late complication early complication as in uh, there can be a uh, uh, stump uh, there can be a ne- bowel necrosis there can be a uh, uh, <coughs> narrowing of the uh, lumen uh, uh, more it, important in the immediate post op period you come across and next morning you find something is wrong necrosis necro- One is necrosis. What else? There is no content. Uh, no, no, no. Retraction. Retraction. If it's not done it properly, or if you have done a very wide stoma, <clears throat> it may prolapse. So these are all immediate uh, complications which can happen in in the first or second post-op day, and you may bleeding. If you have not managed the vessel properly, there might be bleeding of the stomal side. And delayed complications. there can be uh, there can be prolapse there can be retraction peristomal herniation uh, and stenosis stenosis all right okay so how do you prevent this complication that you have been shown the peristomal hernia sir uh, for the prevention uh, we can uh, use a uh, method uh, for the creation of the stoma there it can be a sugar sugar bucket technique may before this sugar bucket is is for uh, operation what are the measures first of all you you have already mentioned what should be the ideal site for bringing the stoma out which will cause less herniation between the rectus sheath over the spinal umbilical line yes yes it should be through the rectus sheath if you are if you are lateral to that the incidence of uh, other complications are more So it should be to the rectus sheath number one. Number two, Not why do you make the opening? 
while you make the opening to bring the gut out what should be the point it should mind it should be of adequate uh, size yes uh, optimal size big. optimal it should not be less so that cause stenosis or it should be very wide so it collapses out so it is the optimal opening in the yes and and have you come across any other technique people are trying to do during doing the stoma so the, some people are attempting to put a mesh uh, yes. before creating uh, stoma yes. there the is in, in and against what is the point against the uh, mesh while doing a stoma one so, point uh, so uh, people do consider there are more chances of infection of the mesh yes. so it's a contaminated surgery so some people decry that we should not put a mesh but people are trying that you can prevent because the incidence of peritoneal hernia is so high people are putting a mesh i think we can pass on the next one oh uh, yes sir so just uh, sir uh, why can't this be an ileostoma apart from the site apart from the looking yeah. at the mucosa of the sir sir sir, sir one is, point is, one is. point which one is the cranial side of the patient and which one is the caudal side of the patient which one is the head and which one is the leg is this a right sided stoma is this a left sided stoma left sided left sided now yes now as you have said it is not that we have not brought ileostomy <coughs> we have but you see there are technical some conventions and there are some usual rules anything on the right lower quadrant is usually expected to be an ileostomy anything on the left lower quadrant is usually expected to be a colostomy anything on the right upper quadrant is a transverse colostomy anything on the left upper quadrant we usually do not make a jejunal stoma but if required seeing the content yes and you are partly right but remember this is an oski this is a simulated environment in a real world i would like to see the content in the bag to confirm whether it's a right sided or a left sided stoma but given the question remember see the scenario 68 year old extensive abdominal surgery with an ostomy okay so for all the per practical purposes and if it was an ileostomy i do not think taking out an end ileostomy in the left lower quadrant will be a very usual procedure to do right okay uh, dr pankaj just two very difficult questions to ask you number one mm -hmm. if you had done a laparoscopic surgery say this was an apr if someone has done a laparoscopic apr versus open apr will this hernia complications be the same more or less what is your opinion sir uh, it will be same sir okay it is the same number 1 number 2 in which scenario not in this patient any patient with a parastomal hernia will you never ever give a mesh in a stoma sorry sir i didn't got your question can you please sir Okay. This patient has a hernia, and you are planning to put in a mesh like the sugar baker technique that you have said, and then you are planning to repair the stoma, isn't it? Okay. In which technique or which abdominal pathologies will you not put a mesh for a repair of a stoma? So this is the last honors getting question. So we move on to the next one, Mali. Any answer to this, sir? Yes, yes. remember patients who have a crohn's disease that means an chance of fistula formations in those patients you try to avoid either prophylactic or a therapeutic use of mesh in a parastomal hernia right so please remember this one in those patients you need to re change the site of the hernia and you need to close the wound and then change the stoma to a different site okay right i think we now move to the next one yeah thank you sir milin also Yes, sir. sir the next question uh, will be taken by dr jyoti sir so good morning sir good morning a good tourist morning. was admit uh, sir a tourist was admitted with a stab injury to the abdomen his bp during admission was 90 by 60 ml hg pulse rate was 120 per minute respiratory rate 30 per minute patient could speak his name clearly what are your priority now in ear hmm. Hmm. sir so is it is a multi trauma or uh, just a isolated abdominal trauma as an isolated abdominal trauma and patient could speak his name clearly means the uh, patient airway is normal and i can assess and and, so, and 
approach? sir if patient is unstable this is a I... patient this is a patient who has got a transient responder will you take him to theater or will you send him to ct for good evaluation sir um, but there is a, they mentioned rapid fall so i want to go for a operative management so state question state answer the patient who is having a stab wound with a life like this and he is a transient responder he will die it is can suit the question of senior ct scan suit will go to the operation okay. okay so you will go to the operation theater causes an approach done yes. now the third question sir a patient presented with two episodes of hematuria what are the investigation plan sir patient is uh, unstable i'll go with the fast if patient is stable i'll go with the cct this is again the same question fast is written <coughs> for all patient okay oh, cct follow up <laughs> right but will you like to do an ct scan in this patient as sir is very very appropriately no, mentioned no sir very importantly mentioned to understand the importance of this patient and the question this is not a blunt abdominal trauma this is a patient with a pitting abdominal trauma <clears throat> where you understand that the patient had an hypotension okay so that technically means that there is a bleed that is intra abdominal that will be active bleed with the patient having hematuria suggest that that there may be an injury to the kidney uh-huh. or the bladder maybe So you do not know what are the maybe this one. So what is the investigation plan for this patient? This is not a blunt abdominal trauma. So what is your answer then? So Maximum you can do fast. Yes, you can do. But technically, in a penetrating abdominal trauma with an unstable patient, there is the East guidelines do not go for a fast. So hmm. when you talk about investigations, I will not be requiring any particular investigations. But during the operation. i need to see that this is the right side of the abdomen i will need to do what single shot 
Sir, what is the surgical maneuver that a surgeon needs to do to see the retroperitoneal structures and the vascular structures on the right side? Cattle brush maneuver, sir. Medialization of the right side. That is okay. what. What is next? Next, cattle brush takes the colon, and yes. then you need to see more in the retroperitoneum. Yes. If you do cattle brush, you reach colon retroperitoneum, or need to do something else. Operation of diode normals. What is that? Cochlearization of diode. Huh? Cochlearization of diode norms. Yes. So first cattle brush, and then cochlearization. Right. Okay. So that means, sir, it usually starts with the cochlearization. Then you go for a right colon mobilization. Both of them combined are called as a cattle brush. If you extend your cut of the peritoneum to involve the root of the mesentery, reflect the small bowel also. That is called as an extended cattle brush, which exposes the left iliac artery also. The cattle brush is known to expose the right-sided iliac, the full vena cava, the right kidney. and you will get a control over the right sided renal pedicle right okay. so okay. this is the usual plan so i think that you have you have answered good we move to the last case of the day i think yeah who is coming uh so i don't have a volunteer sir uh, can i attempt to answer the question sir yes Yes, come on. Million dollar job. Read, uh, sir. Uh, a seventy-year-old lady was diagnosed a case of cancer cecum, awaiting surgery. Presented on to presented to emergency. On admission, she appears to be severely short of breath and extremely tired. Further questioning reveals that her rectal blood loss has been no greater than usual. Uh, so, first question is: Describe her gas exchange. It's ABG. Uh, uh, Describe this yes. ABG. Sir, so the the patient has a pH of seven point four nine. She is having alkalosis uh, with uh, hypocarpia as the PCO two is low, uh, but normal oxygen saturation. Sir, what about bicarb? Sir, so bicarb is uh, sir, sir bicarb is also within the normal range. Sir, so it's towards the lower end, but it is uh, within the normal range. Sir. So, what is the acid base stage you want to describe on based on this? Sir, based on this, uh, the acid base stage is sir uh, primary respiratory alkalosis. Good. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, sir, should I move on to the next question, sir? Yeah. Sir, uh, the most likely cause of her breathlessness, uh, sir, anem, sir, I'm I'm not sure, but sir, anemic hypoxia, sir. Because of the okay. hemoglobin is six point eight, so mm -hmm. so it is now. It will not be called a hypoxia. So hypoxia is a saturation or a desaturation state because the PO two is eleven point nine. It is eighty nine millimeter mercury is a PO two. Yes. Okay, but yes, uh, as you have mentioned, the most of the cause of a breathlessness will be maybe a process of hyperventilation. So see, maybe hyperventilating more than this. Probably due to the anemia, which is making her do that. Okay, what will be the most effective way of improving the oxygen delivery to the tissues? The uh, uh, transfusion of concentrated PRBC along with oxygen supplementation. Absolutely right. So you need to give a blood transfusion, and that is a very right to mention. You will be giving a packed cell transfusion, in preference to whole blood transfusion. Okay, so good one. So see, these are. Again, simple questions. If you have worked in your wards or hospitals, so this question will be good, and we'll be testing you. So that's good, very good. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sir, I have one question. Yes. Sir. Uh, sir, here it is written that describe her acid-base state. So uh, we will write that primarily it's a respiratory alkalosis. So yes. do we have to uh, write whether it is compensated or not yes. compensated? That is something that I was going to come to. Sir, it, it is compensated. Yes, sir, it is compensated actually. Oh, seven point four nine uh, is the pH. Uh, sir, partially compensated because the bicarb level should have fallen by a factor of two, and if we take the average value of bicarb of twenty four, 
So it is fallen by two, sir, and it is towards the lower limit of twenty-two, sir. Uh, sir, if you say see, uh, I will not be using the word partially compensated. Either it is compensated or it is uncompensated. Okay. So I will be using the word uncompensated because it is seven point four nine, and you are rightly to mention that yes, the bicarbonate is on the lower range of the normal. So I will be mentioning it as an uncompl as an uncompensated primary respiratory alcohol. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, the... Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ramanuj. Nice discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.